Hey, welcome back from the break. Um, today on our main discussion segment, we're discussing benefits of travels and tourism. And joining us on the conversation today is a travel consultant who works with Afro Tourism and is known for the person that speaks to Sam Adeleke. Good to have you on our program today, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so we 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 got to know you're a travel consultant and um, can you share with us places you've been to that we've not been to? You know, there's this thing I feel like these people just love adventure, like they travel <laughs> around, they like to flex. So tell us, where have you been to? That we've not been to. Mm, mm. So let me ask, where have you been to? <laughs> I'm not actually gonna love to. <laughs> How are you? Oh, <laughs> oh geez. Well, let's get serious, okay, okay. Jude. <laughs> let's start. Let's start from Lagos. All right. Have you been to Omo Resort? Mm, where is it that? It has the only zoo in Lagos. There's a lion, um, a hyena, camel, baboon, and amazing um, animals there. Also, wow. an amusement park as well. Also, from there, go to Lake Conservation Centre. Yeah, that is. That has that the longest, the longest canopy there. walkway in Africa. Yeah. In Lagos. Also, you move on to the Kalakota Republic Museum. Hmm. Where this you have the <laughs> <laughs> like it was it was the home of of Elan Okay, you know where you can also look at the history. It, it's an historical um museum, okay. you know. So also for those who were students of history want to experience wow. you know, such um knowledge and information. Of course, then you move over to Badagri, hmm. the Badagri Slave Town, an amazing yeah. place where you yeah. where, where you get. I know that Christians will love this. Actually, yeah, you know, know this they, 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 yeah. thousand exactly the very the four story history. building, exactly. and also yeah. the Bible that Bishop Ajay Crowd that yeah. used yeah. you know, that was translated from Yoruba to English. You see it yeah. there. Yeah. 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 It's amazing, and also you you get to experience the point of no return, mm -hmm. yeah. where the slaves you know passed right. before they joined the ship that took them to Americas, to wow. the Americas, to Europe, and all that. So you get to have that physical experience, you know, in that in that setting. And from Lagos. Let's move on to Olumorok. Ogo State. 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 You know, Olumorok, which has the, mm. the, the the biggest rock formation in Nigeria. Wow. Amazing. And wow. the, interesting, you know, actually they have over one million visitors, domestic visitors every year. Yeah. And it's cheap to enter, just like seven yeah. seven naira you enter. From Olumorok, let's move to even Ibadan, mm. the home of government. Mm. You know, we have Agodi Gardens. Mm. Ibadan. Amazing. Just like naira to enter as well, where you, where you can relax. And there are also lions. No, there's no lion there. No, no. There, 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 there are, there's a crocodile. No, no. There's, there's a yeah. In, in, in UI, they, they have they have zoos there. Yeah. But they they, they, but but this Agodi Gardens is a place where you can just relax. You know, mm -hmm. just take fresh air. The, the greens, the vegetation, the lush, the mm. and, the, yeah. and, the, yeah. and the atmosphere. Mm. You know, and you see the, you see a beautiful stream. Okay. You know, mm. while you are there, you can boat just ride. boat ride. Mm. You know, swim. You know, and take ice cream. You know, just relax on the weekend or something. And then from there, go to the Coco House if I don't amazing wow there's amazing. a museum on the 23rd floor so after you experience you enter that museum and you get to see the stories of obatme Olowo, and the Azikiwe. you see nigeria's history all around you see the, the things they were using then the tvs mm -hmm. the radio all those old school things there yeah. after that then you now you're not taking outside the veranda and you now have the panoramic view of the old of the battle mm -hmm. on that height you can see the old of the battle from yeah. that place because it is the highest or the tallest building mm. in in, yes, in Nevada right now. Now, from there, let's move on to Osho, Osho State. You have the Osho Shogo Group. Yeah. It is one of the two UNESCO um, World Heritage Sites in Nigeria. The second mm. one is in Adama State, the Sokor Cultural Landscape. Okay. Amazing, massive place. Let's keep going. We we'll go up also to Kwara State. The thing is, the, the list is actually endless. <laughs> it's endless. In Kwara State, let, 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 let me say one more. Kwara State has the Owu Falls. Owu Falls. Owu Falls is the tallest in West Africa. Yeah. One fifty meters. And interestingly, as the water is falling, if you scream, oh, the, the volume the will increase. Ooh. The volume of the house falls. So imagine such amazing wonder of nature. You know that even you as a believer, you know, it helps to appreciate, helps to worship God more. Mm. When you see God's creation is a majesty. This is another place you know. that requires people to. I think that the, 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 where where we have where we perceive human being called stones. Like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I forgot the name of that place. Oh, you, you, is it a CSO? It's a museum. It's a okay. museum. It's a very yeah. fast museum in Nigeria. Is that the wow. museum? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. very fast yeah. museum. We, so we, we, um, you know, the <laughs> list now yeah, that we, we've not been able to exhaust the <laughs> we list, can't. It's, it's, well, service center that we have in Nigeria. The, yeah. the thing is, 
are people really aware that places like this exist? And mm. if they do, how often do they, you know, do they create time to visit places like this to at least appreciate mm. the work of Niger? Um, to be, to work. be honest, yeah, because of my work in the industry, a lot of Nigerians do not really know so much about these places. Sure, the people okay. that really do know are, are held our, our fathers, mm. you know, because they then when Nigeria was too good, when people can drive from Lagos to Ibadan to Shokoto, you know, with train, people knew these places. But the younger the generation because of the fact that these places have not been developed yeah. and there is there are security perception issues mm. and a lot of people believe that if you only travel out of the country that's that is when you have made it you know so okay. there's so much a, a attention on the west mm. and on foreign leisure foreign relaxation so a lot of people do not really know these things so it's on um, people like us that are doing so much work in promoting this domestic um travel destinations and that's why we're also here yeah. you know so the people people are building awareness gradually you know yeah. but to be honest nigerians do not really know much about it. and even when they know they say mm, stay at home what mm. are you looking for mm. is it safe you know that's that fear of leaving your comfort zone people just want to be safe just yeah. go to the house go to church stay at home mm. you know, even though they know that ah, there's one ulu morok there's one this there you know <laughs> what does that mean in English? <laughs> Translate, please. That is, you can be in your house and still be in your Exactly, because mm. from, from research, about 30 percent of all accidents happen indoors, exactly. domestically. You know, people exactly. falling down, people, you know, different things. But so you know. I would like you to, you know, to you know, explain to us what are the benefits oh, of you know indulging in tourism, travels, and all of that because. We know that okay, this place exists, even though you've not been there. Mm. We know that okay, there are some places that you need to mm. be, to, you know, you need to go, but you've not had the opportunity. So, if we now, you know, um, relay the benefits of creating time for yourself to, you know, get to see these things, what 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 are, what are those things? What 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 good will it do to people, <laughs> to our viewers? Mm. There are, there are lots of benefits for travel. Number okay. one, it helps you to relax because when you leave your regular um, routine a triangular life you know and you are so set in your ways you don't think you don't have a, a fresh perspective to life you are so monotonous mm. you know but when you travel it gets like oh this is done this way oh that is done this way oh really and it helps your brain to even get relaxed you know mm. it helps you to it helps your part of your brain cells to grow because now you're exposing yourself to new information it's therapeutic you know mm. it, it helps to uh, you, you drop the stress of surviving or trying to make money mm. or to just take some hair, relax, take a break. It helps to achieve work-life balance. Yeah. It's, the, the doctors do tell you that take a break, go on holiday, go on vacation, don't play with it. Don't just be working nine to five, back to back, the first seven days to five days, mm -hmm. and, and and then break down. So number one, it helps you to um, relax and helps for other purposes. Number two, yeah. it helps education and exposure. It helps you to learn new things, learn new information. It helps to know that the world does not stop and begin at your church mm -hmm. or yeah. at your home or at your office. Let us you know, you know that there are people who are living in some other parts of the world who do not even know that you exist and mm -hmm. they are living a good life. So it helps to ask questions. It helps you to like, ah, ah, okay, so I can do something, I can do my own um, thing better because mm -hmm. you think that you're a local champion wherever you are. But when you mm -hmm. travel, it gives you exposure, that knowledge. Yeah. Number three, when you travel, it helps you to be more business oriented because we we're talking earlier that how can you make money while traveling mm -hmm. people go to dubai to go and buy to go and buy clothes okay. goods shoes because they want to come and sell in nigeria and simply because it is cheaper even china as well there's a place in china called guanzu there are a lot of Igbo traders i've had friends who go there and they say people traders okrika on the road in Ooh. china selling i don't know <laughs> the ones that they, they have shops in idumata mm. so they will send in things back things home things you get at very cheap very low cost so when you travel you see that people can produce things that you think that cannot be produced at very cheap cost and so while you're relaxing probably you are taking one week for vacation you do three days relaxing it took take two days you know to go and shop and buy things come and sell back home mm -hmm. you know and then the other one you can of course go to go to church go to ev go do evangelism see how people are are, are living that they're worshiping yeah. god people that you think that if they, if they don't dress like you or if they don't, if they don't talk like you they don't behave like you they're not God, <laughs> they're not human, they're not Christians, but yeah. you see that it, 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 that's you actually question your question the things, the, the philosophies, and the uh, and the things you have been taught. Not question to doubt, but mm. question to understand the more. Mm. And God is a merciful God, and God 
you know, I, I, that, why, that, that this is really a new aspect to my faith. It, 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 it does your faith to, to grow the more because you are seeing new things and it helps you to expand your horizon. You know, so, yeah, you, you were saying something about you know exposure and experience, mm. and um, you know many people be like, "What is this guy saying?" I have not even had money to feed, and mm. you're telling me to you know create That's time cool. out. You know, some people have never gone around Nigeria. Not talk mm. of chatting abroad, That's like you know go oh, go travel, around, yes. go on tourism and all of that. So, <laughs> what would you have to say as regards you know the economic situation in Nigeria and how many Nigerians are not even able to you know? To provide for themselves, how much more go on tourism? Mm -hmm. Nigeria's situation is a very peculiar one in terms of the fact that we have so much abundance, mm. yet people do not have, you know, um, people still live in penury. Yeah, right people do not. Uh, there's what I'm looking for: mm. um, expendable income. Like after you've met your basic needs, the yeah. one that you still left to spend. Mm. You know, now having done that, you should. What we tell people that see, don't allow Nigeria to kill you. Because if, I like you that. Die, <laughs> if you die, we can you come back. We <laughs> it's not allow Nigeria. Don't to allow kill Nigeria you. to kill you. Okay. Consciously detach yourself from the environment. Mm. Don't let it limit your thinking and your ability to live a full life. So tell people, see, there are there are three facets, um, facets to life: work, relaxation, and faith. While you are dedicated mm. to your calling, work so that you can eat. And when you eat, then relax. Take mm. time off. Now, if you're not earning so much, depending on what your income is, the minimum wage is eighteen thousand. Let's start with eighteen thousand naira. Now you can save to travel. Start with Lagos. Don't as we are living Lagos. Start with Lagos. Wherever you're living, think of okay. Just go go online. You have a phone. Yeah. Where are the places I can relax in Lagos? If you can't find it, go to, go to our website afrotourism.com. Check it. You see places where you can go to, and just look at the prices. Okay. To spend three to spend the weekend in a baragui as well as fifty thousand naira or forty thousand naira. Why are the hotels? You see hotels of ten k, nine k, five k, three k. Which ones can I afford? You know, you can save for six months. Yeah. You know, so where can I go to? How do you have journeys to spend? So when you consciously get information, you discover that travel is actually very cheap. Mm. With fifty k, you can have a very lovely weekend with yourself and your family. Because mm. interestingly, when you are booking a room, especially if you are married, you can stay. With, with, with couples and if you are even going as a group for example like a fine tropicana you can rent a whole three bedroom flat for one fifty thousand naira you know so ladies can stay in the room guys can stay in the room you, you contribute you can go as a group contribute okay. money and share yeah. the cost you can even cook you don't have to buy the food okay. so if you think about the fact the, the first thing think about it think know that you deserve it mm. exactly because people don't think ah, i don't deserve to well, well, how much have i need in this life waste of money, waste of money you know <laughs> you know you know you know so what is, is, is it about that <laughs> of course i'm not spending it every month okay. that's why maybe maybe what they want to yeah so while, while you are saving when you have your income you are not, you, you you are portion it i'm saving this amount in my fixed deposits or in my mutual funds or in my long term savings, I'm saving this one one k. Even it's one one k, even if it is to go on a day trip and come back, like go in the morning, come back in the evening, so you don't have to stay overnight, you know. So be deliberate about looking at your income, saving for travel, just to relax and you know to get away from your usual environment. I would like to ask a question as regards culture. Mm. Yeah. We are saying now, being a traveler, going to a particular environment which I've never been to. Mm. What, we, what, what can you see are, 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 are in line with culture and tourism? Culture is the way of life of a people. That's yeah. the church has something. That's yeah. what I thought in school. Yeah. You know? So that means, that <laughs> you know. <laughs> so culture is simply how a lot of people live. And interestingly, tourism is a umbrella, it's an umbrella body for culture. Culture is a, is a part of tourism because you get to see the way some people, the way people dress how they live, how they worship, how they cook, mm. how they interact. For example, and bringing back to, to the faith, I, when I visited um, Oshoshobo Grove, you know the place is a grove, it's a forest. They call it a time evil forest because there's, there's, there's a lot of festivals, rituals that yeah. are done there. And I asked, because I'm, I'm a child of God, I, I, I try to reflect my faith wherever I go. And I asked the woman, the poor guy, that, ah, Madam, okay, um, are you a Christian or Muslim? She said she's a Christian. That she, and she works here every day and that same time is they are about to do the festival in August yeah. every year okay. that a few weeks before they restrict 
tourists because the Ogonis they mm. come to to do, to do incantations to, to do to stuff. The to the, and, and mm. she said that they will just they excuse them. Mm. They're on their own. You're on your own. So when you are traveling and you are learning, you also create boundaries mm. because evil is real. You, you can't just say, eh, because blood of you Jesus. Say that again. Evil is what? Evil <laughs> is real. Is real. Don't say because this Instagram world, you know, <laughs> selfie thing. Like, and I'll say, like there's nothing. Hashtag some good things. You know, ah, woo. Hey, don't go inside. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, but the wisdom is profitable to direct. Yeah, exactly. And even Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar. Yeah. And give to God what is God's. You know, so while you're going to those places, ensure that you don't cross your boundaries. Ask questions. Because they will tell you that. This is the origin of this festival, of this culture. This is this tree should not don't, don't move near, don't cut the leaf. There's a place in Ondo State, a river, whereby there are there, there are trees around it, a long river, and there, there, there are no leaves on it. Wow. If you throw a leaf on it, it will throw it will blow it away. Wow. So it, it's a river that, that people that they worship because they believe that there is a god mm-hmm. in it. But I know that there's scientific proof that that will probably show the chemical properties of it. But that now, since nobody has gone there, when you go there, you know, you don't do past yourself. You just <laughs> appear and respect right. how God has made, has allowed such, you know, cultural festival to evolve. Mm. Mm. Now, another angle to the way of culture. Yeah. What about the use of culture whereby I go to a particular environment mm. in which I don't believe in their culture? Yeah. For example, okay, now, okay, like, I guess it's by you have to wear clothes for example. Okay, okay. Yes, like Swaziland, like, where they yeah. where they, 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 they wear top and, and you want to topless. go there. How what can you feel? How we are you gonna be being like a Christian now? Okay. Are, are you gonna see naked people, people around, around. and things like that? Okay. In fact there, there's been a place that I've called, called naked beach. Whoa. That beach is you don't go you, as you're entering you drop your clothes, you walk in, everybody there is naked. Now, as a tourist, you don't tempt yourself. <laughs> you, you know, have you, you, have, you, have to, you have to make your findings. Just then you say because it's all easy. Now say, ah, Lord, they tempt me. I didn't know. No, no, no you, you should know. Your ignorance is not an excuse to sin. Yeah. And so, if you know that you want to go there and you will not be tempted, and you want to be in the state of nature, in the Garden of Eden, and you know that you <laughs> will not um, commit fornication or lust or the or you, what you see will not affect your thoughts. So, they say, oh, oh man, know thyself. You can't just say because you want to explore, you are not real. So in the course of traveling and, and expose yourself to things, that when I travel and go for my events, they say, Ah, Sam, we are going for party tonight. And it's also part of the trip, nightlife, to so mm. stay out of the city at night. You go to the place, they are smoking, shisha, everything, weed, everything, and they are drinking. I said, I tell them, I don't smoke. I just need um, a bottle of soft drink. So, Bible says we are in the world, we are not of the world. Yeah. I have to be there so I can see and report the information for my audience. The truth is, see, you cannot save the world. Mm. It is the Holy Spirit that does the saving. And we cannot be the light or the salt if we do not go to those places, but we should be immune. That means mm. you should fortify yourself and develop your capacity mm. such that when you go to places that can either to make you to sin, you do not compromise your values. So you should know that you want to go in here. If I go in, will I do it? I better don't go. But if I go, you should put in structures to protect yourself. Uh, um, wow, well, I love that. Another angle <laughs> I want to I want to share more light on the issue of security. Okay. okay. Many people mm. are here. It's like ah, I'm going to a place where I don't know. Am I secure? Yeah. Will I be bad guy for things like that? Mm. Share more light on security. And um, so to so, so, to couple with that, I would like you to say something about you know the activities of you know tour operators. Um, the top the, yeah, okay. top operators like the, the role they play, okay. And okay. um, you know, there are some unstoppable activities that some of them indulge in mm. that actually you know, <laughs> leave um, those travelers mm. and tourists, you know. Okay, so I would like you to L- let me together. start with uh, security. Yeah, there is nowhere in the world that is safe as of today. Hmm. The only place you are safe is yeah. in the arms of God, even your house is gone, you can drop a bomb. Yes. Mm. Now, the reason I say this is this. Security issues are simply perception issues. Why? The US is not safe. There are drive-by shootings. People enter school and shoot almost every other week. In the UK, people shoot stabbings constantly. South Africa, from the airport, you start stealing your things. They stole one of my stuff last time South Africa in May. You know, but interestingly, how do these countries manage it? They spend so much on marketing and promoting their destinations. Mm. Such that people do not even hear those bad news, mm. and the media cooperates with them. Mm. You get so 
Nigeria with the Boko Haram issue in the northeast. Right now, just day before yesterday on social media, there was a there's an international station that now wrote Nigeria is the worst place to live on the earth because they are hacking down Christians in this in their sleep. Hmm. I have comment that I am a Nigerian and I'm a Christian. Nigeria is not the worst place to live on earth. Yes, there are issues in the north, but the president can work on it. Let the international community put pressure on the president to work on it. You know, so as as Christians, as believers, as travel and exposed people, when commercials are coming up, because our government is not doing enough to promote Nigeria. Mm. The only thing we hear about Nigeria is Buari going to London mm. for 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 for, oh. for check up. You know, for, the, for, <laughs> for, 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 for medical reasons. <laughs> And, and, and when the vice president is also doing his vacation, he yeah. goes to Dubai or the UK or the US. Yeah. So when our leaders, mm. who are the chief tourists, chief marketers of Nigeria, do not promote Nigeria in their actions, in their words, even our media, the mm. NTAs of this world, the channels of this world, the silver bed, the golf TVs of this world, they are not doing so much to promote the beautiful parts of the country. There is no way the world will be seen and appreciated. So mm. those countries that we think that they are less safe, they are not less safe. Just Kenya also have mm. the Al Shabaab issue in the north of Kenya because they are also like Abu Haram. But Kenya is one of the top ten destinations to visit in Africa, you know, and they earn close to a billion dollars in tourism annually. Now, the, so like I said, the answer to that is simply Nigeria should spend much more on promoting its country. Mm. Set up a tourism promotion agency, just like. South Africa has South Africa Tourism Board, Kenya has Kenya Tourism Board, you know, specific agencies that dedicated towards promoting Nigeria's culture and it's a lot of money. So Nigeria mm. should put money into, into that. that. Now, yeah. having done that, tour operators, yeah. what is their role? Just like in every industry where there, where there is fraud, there's also fraud in the travel industry. Mm. The recent example is that of the Russia uh, World Cup okay, so that they just uh, finished just last yeah. week or last two weeks. Whereby some Nigerians bought tickets mm. and they got stranded because they only they were only told when, when, that their ticket is one way. Mm. Then imagine that. Normally, when you buy a ticket, it should be a return ticket. Mm. And that I guess what happened was that the the the, the, the ticket price probably return ticket should be three hundred k. They told them, ah, Russia is cheap, one fifty. Mm. Whereas it's one way. Mm. So it's ignorance. That means did they read the document that they were given? That means what was promising something that is cheap. Show me. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Read. Don't just yeah. assume. Don't just be jump into a wolf. And I think what happened was simply because Russia made their entry visa very easy. Once you can buy a fan ID, a ticket, that's your entry visa. You don't need to go to the embassy. So it was very easy to enter Russia. A lot of yeah. people who are not even travel yeah. uh, tour operators yeah. were saying, Ah, Russia, 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 I can get tickets for you. So a lot of people do people that did not know or mm. understand the basics of travel. You know, so I, I believe that when you go online, the, we have the National Association of Tour Operators, we have the Nigeria Association of um, Nigeria Travel, and National Association of Nigerian Travel Agencies. We also have about 21 associations whereby you can confirm and check, you know, the veracity of this information of whoever is posted as a tour operator. Mm -hmm. you know, even afrotourism.com, you can check us and we can guide you on the people who are real, who are legit, so you don't fall into into the arms of uh, thank podcast. you thank you we need to go on a short break we'll come back we'll continue that discuss thank you guys for right back.
Hey, welcome back from the break. We still have our travel conductor with us, Mr. Sam Adeliki. And yes, we're still discussing about the benefits of travel and tourism. Before we went on the break, um, Jude has a question for our guest. Uh, yes, uh, oh, I would like to ask you about familiar apps that you think people can easily log on to know the digital world, like if you want to really go to their office and things like that, and kind of apps. Can you try and get more light on the kind of apps that people can make use of when they want to go and travel and like? Okay, the number one app in the world is TripAdvisor. So just type in your app, TripAdvisor it comes up, download, and you can check out reviews of places. People that have gone there, they write their reviews, their experiences. So check it out. Also give you ideas. That's number one. Number two, Viator. Viator, that's V-I-A-T-O-R.com. Also very important, very nice, a global app as well. Number three, you can also check out Afrotourism.com as well. Afrotourism, you can check us. We also have U-Trip, that's U-T-R-I-P-E.com. You, you very amazing app to also use. You can also uh, check out Viable. That's V A Y A B L E dot com. And finally, Google Trips. Google has an app itself. So just on Google, just like Google Trips. So it's a very amazing app where you can organize your trips, your hotel, things to do, where to go, what to eat, flight options, you know, and every other information you need. So okay, so I would like to ask you that. What impact does tourism have on our GDP? Mm. In Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I love that smile. Over ninety percent of Nigerians' earnings is from oil and gas. Mm. And interestingly, last year, twenty seventeen, uh, travel and tourism contributed to only, contributed one point seven percent, about, which is very small, and that's total like one point one six billion naira, you know, contributions to the GDP outside the over you know 500 billion um, naira mm. um, worth of nigeria's industry and gdp so to speak now how can what are the potentials of tourism i'll, I'll give examples because before you say how can something work for me let's see how it's working for other people in africa the top five countries earning from tourism morocco interesting south africa egypt rwanda Kenya, Tanzania, and um, Uganda. That's top seven already, not five. <laughs> <laughs> now, these countries earn, the top earner is Morocco. Morocco earns as much as one billion, over one billion dollars mm -hmm. from tourism. Now, let, let me come, let me come closer. Rwanda, which is always, anytime I hear Rwanda, I'm always ashamed of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. As of 1994, Rwanda was a killing field. Genocide. Right now, they earn $400 million dollars from tourism annually and nigeria if you convert that one billion dollars to that to, to, to dollars like that you dollarize you share see you see see dollars is not up to it's not up to a million dollars you know okay 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 a million dollars is 360 360 million if you use the rate but it's not up to you know even five million dollars you know so what or how can the country grow its earnings from tourism because Nigeria has over 22 waterfalls. Nigeria has over 300 sites that you can visit all across the country. Every state has amazing sites. The first thing is work on infrastructure. But that is the elephant in the room. That's the obvious you know, thing. Because people come, they want to go to Olumorok or to Budukatu Ranch. But they have to spend seven hours on bad roads. You know, interesting. When you now get there, because I've been there, you are climbing up the hill and you are up in the air, you are seeing clouds beside you. You are not flying. You. So you, the, the experience you have is not commensurate with the stress you take to get there. As Obudu, Obudu which is one of the flagship tourist destinations in, in Nigeria, they, they only put on lights by 6 p.m. and put it off by 12, generator. There is no power grid that goes there. Mambila Plateau, which is the highest point in Nigeria, and Arabah states, have been there. It's like Iceland, it's like Ireland lush greens amazing place but there is no connection for national grid there everybody there puts on generator so things like this when they are done people will come naturally so that's number one number two make the the entry point to nigeria to be very very easy even nigerians who are born outside of nigeria find it difficult to get visas to Nigeria. So even when you need their passports, they find it difficult outside Nigeria. 
And how can you really earn? Simply by foreign exchange. Because the power of the Naira compared, because if people spend, if I spend my money as a Nigerian, compared to if I spend one Naira compared to one dollar, that's 360 Naira. So you need to open the, open the, 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 the immigration, the, the processes that make people come in easy so that they can spend that dollar in Nigeria. Now, number three, give incentives for Nigerians to travel. You know, let's let them, let's make, do competitions, organize festivals, organize events, let people travel, you know, let's, let's it be fun. Because I, I tell you what, last year, because Nigeria recovered from a recession in the third and fourth quarters of last year, Nigerians spent, this is by statistics, over $1 billion on outbound travel, on flights. Nigerians are spending so much. People travel, an, an, an average of 3,000 Nigerians go to Dubai per day. You know, Nigerians travel so much, but if you make Nigeria to be a place where people can do business, people can, you know, that money will stay because now we're in summer period. People are on all the things right now. People are flying. We are, for us, the, the highest selling package we have right now is Dubai. People are selling. People are flying on Emirates, going to Dubai, then the UK, you know, then the Caribbean and the US. So, Let's let's if that money is staying in the country, you can imagine how that will help to boost you know, the economy. So making number one infrastructure, number two, promoting this country and make and giving incentives to those sites. You know, so that when people go to Anobudu, they go to Oloma, they go to Kwara State. You know, because actually word of mouth is the most powerful. If I tell you that I've been to Obudu, and how was your experience? It was good. Oh, really should be there. People will go naturally without even having spending so much on marketing or so much on sites so make these places attractive let people come subsidize travel if i'm going for holiday the domestic tickets from Niger from lagos to port Harcourt or to Calabar or to abuja should be cheaper if i'm going on holiday make it make it attractive and the hotels subsidize let them pay less on tax because actually those, those guys run on diesel on and the government tax them. There's multiple tax, so the cost of even traveling. That's why you said 150k on on. <laughs> Accommodation is you, you get, and it's not their fault because they, they they pay they pay taxes. They pay radio tax, television tax, local government tax, LIRS, <laughs> FIRS. Exactly. Some they're supposed to make you to relax. That, that they got their under pressure. Yeah. How can somebody under yeah. pressure make you to relax? Exactly. So you know. Because wow. even their, 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 their wait, waitresses, waiters, everybody, they are all boning because they not pay them, mm -hmm. you know. So, <laughs> they, they say, ah, welcome, oh, welcome to our hotel, like, hey, yeah. you're welcome. <laughs> and drop your baggage, that's your key, that's your key to your room, yeah. you know. So, when, when you make, when you create an enabling an, 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 an environment, let these people that are operating these uh, sites, only moral, you get there, they not pay the staff. Mm. At, at, at some point last year, the staff of Ubudu, they, they struck, they went on strike because they didn't mm. pay them. Wow. You know, so when you're not even making these things easy for people that are working there and people that are running and operating these things, you know, Nigerians who don't want to stay. So those are the basic. And uh, when, of course, for for Rwanda to be having 400 million dollars, and they are just nine million. That's mm. not up to any much local government in Lagos mm. generating that money. How much more? One eighty million. So the potential. So if Rwanda of nine million people is generating 400 million dollars, how much more Nigeria can generate if we get those parameters right? Wow, that's a big insight into Nigeria tourism. <laughs> like, um, you know, everything, you know, after everything you said here, yeah, I really hope that, you know, even the government can can decide, you know, they can decide on their part to improve on the infrastructure, the facilities we have in most of these attraction centers mm -hmm. all over Nigeria. And of course, it will have an impact on our GDP, like he said. And yes, Nigerians too. By the time everything has been put in place, let's cultivate <laughs> the habits. <laughs> the habits, you know. Yeah, yeah let's travel. Let's mm. you know get the exposure, the experience. Apple. Okay, so Jude, where are we going now? At least by December. Let's give let's, December. let's give government. <laughs> <laughs> let's give government at least about five more, three, four, five more to be there. Seriously, we need to. We, yeah, mm. that's another thing. Food tourism. No, we will mm. discuss mm. behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> right after that. <laughs> well, I know that our viewers enjoyed this episode, and uh, we want to give a big uh, thank you My to pleasure. our, our guests. Thank you for My coming pleasure. through for us. Yes, to so our viewers, you can send me your comments and your contributions by going to our social media platform on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at all official golf tv with Ashka. keep it simple and um, on this note we're signing out on behalf of um, golf tv crew jude and myself 
we are saying that us, you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> please cultivate the idea of you know, traveling exploring so many people you have there they're telling you they love adventure what mm. adventure have you exactly. had lately yeah, okay. so yeah. please <laughs> walk the talk <laughs> walk the talk mm. exactly thank you very much enjoy the rest of your day bye bye, -bye.